Welcome back to Wall Street Training's Advanced Financial Model, Building the Core Model. You have thus far already completed as much as you can on the income statement as well as the balance sheet, the first pass. Now, let's focus our attention on the cash flow statement. Let's take a look at what the company has to say regarding the company's share repurchase program. So I'm on this section here. Again, page 26, company share repurchase program. And they say the following, from time to time, we repurchase shares of our common under a $10 billion share repurchase program. During the first half of 06, they repurchased 3.6. Last year, 4.5. Now, it just so happens that roughly speaking, every few years, every three years or so, they announce a new repurchase program every three years approximately. So let's just make the assumption that on a $10 billion program, on average, they will spend roughly a third of that. So let's just say, for estimate purposes, they will spend $3,500 dollars or 3.5 billion dollars on the share we purchase per year so in cell i48 please type in 3500 i'm going to zoom out again because we're going to take this to the right so in i48 in j48 you're going to say equals left arrow to say equals i48 now we have a fundamental problem here what's the fundamental pro all right we got lots of problems but what's the problem here the problem here is that ironically part of the reason why we're building this model is we're trying to get the valuation of the firm and the stock price. Well, if we're trying to do that, fundamentally, we know we'll spend $3.5 billion. But how many shares does that actually get us? In order to figure out the number of shares that actually gets us or buys back, we need to know the stock price. Well, the ironic thing is that's probably one of the things that we're actually trying to calculate based on this fundamental intrinsic value model. So the way to mitigate this potential problem is that we will look at this on a projected EPS on a trailing basis. What this means is we will take last year's, let's do this in another color, we will take last year's earnings per share, multiply by the historical P-E ratio using historical numbers, and if that has been constant, fairly constant in the last few years, then it will be a sufficient guesstimate of the stock price that they will use to buy back the shares. So we'll use last year's earnings per share times the P-E ratio. The P-E ratio will assume, based on previous calculations, let's just use 17 times P-E ratio. That will calculate to us the implied share price. We will divide the number, the dollar amount of, the dollar amount that we will spend our shares, to buy back our shares rather, and then figure out the actual number of shares we will actually repurchase. So, in cell I-49, what I would like you to do is say equals. We're going to grab here 2005's EPS. I-49 on the cash flow statement equals. Control page up twice to the income statement. And grab for me 2005 earnings per share, H-26, $2.68. Again, H-26 on the income statement, $2.68. Please hit enter. In J-49, I want you to hit control R to carry that across. In I-50... Please input hard code is 17. Just type in 17 and hit enter. And once you hit 17 and hit enter, you'll notice a little X automatically appears. That is our multiple one, one for one decimal place formatting, which you can hit by getting control shift X. Alternately, under our menu items on top, alt SF for Wall Street training formatting, multiple one X, control shift X, will automatically stick an X in front or in the back of that number without messing up the value. In J50, in case you decide to change this 17 times, in J50, I would like you to say equals I50 17 times as well. Guys, think about this. If my projected earnings per share is 268, and I'm telling you my P-E ratio is 17 times, real quick, EPS times P-E. What's my P-E? It's my price over my earnings per share. So if I do that and I multiply the two, my EPS will cancel out and end up with my implied stock price. Again, for more information on this, please feel free to check out our corporate valuation module in which we go into significantly greater detail on how to incorporate multiples into your analysis. In I-51, you would therefore say equals I-49 times I-50. That is your implied estimated stock price that you will spend or that you will have to pay per share of your $3.5 billion repro uh, repurchase program. Again, I-51 equals I-49 times I-50, $45.59. Of course, all of those calculations are here in your notes on column N. Finally, if we know that we are going to spend $3.5 billion buying back our stock and we'll pay $45.59 per stock, per share, what therefore is the number of shares we will repurchase? Simply the quotient. 
take I-48 and I-52 and say equals, control up arrow twice to I-48, divided by up arrow once to I-51. This is the number of shares we will end up repurchasing. So you will now take, clearly, take I-51 as well as I-52. So you go to I-51 and 2, select both to column J, control R. So when you hit control R, you will now grab those two numbers in there. I'm going to zoom out here because now we will take all of these numbers in column J, shift right to column M, and then control R that across. You are basically assuming a constant $3.5 billion of share repurchases. Your stock price will imply will go up as you earn more money, and the number of shares you repurchase will obviously go down. This is your quick estimate of the number of stock, the number of shares you will repurchase.